Hi, Hillary. Hi, I'm Jade. I'll be your nurse today. Okay, hi. How are you today? I'm okay. Thanks. You're good? Yeah. Uh, so what brought you in today? Well, I noticed a lump in my breast the other day, so I figured I'd just come get it checked out. Okay, is this lump new? Yeah. Yeah. Have you had any other uh, signs or anything that you've noticed re recently? Well, I've noticed that my breasts have been a little bit more tender and red, and they've, I've also had nipple discharge. Is that important? Okay, yeah, those can all be signs of breast cancer. But uh, we can do some further testing okay. and uh, look into that a bit. Uh, do you have any family history of any cancers at all? Actually, my mom had breast cancer and my aunt had ovarian cancer and my grandpa had colon cancer. Okay, uh, do you happen to know if your mother's breast cancer was genetic or not? Well, I think it was on the BRCA gene mutation that she had, that she got breast cancer because of it. Okay, so that, that can be passed down from mother to child, so that's important. Uh, Hillary, what I'd like to do today is uh, we'll complete a breast exam as well as we can send you for a mammogram today to get that a little bit, or check that a little bit further. Okay. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of death in women in Canada. One in nine women will have breast cancer in her lifetime. Men are able to develop breast cancer but are much less likely to. 80% of breast cancer occurs in women after the age of 50. 10 to 20% of all breast cancer cases are caused from a mutation to the BRCA gene, which accounts for 80% of breast cancer cases in women younger than 50. In a healthy breast, there are lobes that surround the inner portion of the breast and open to the nipple. The lobes are supported by connective tissue and adipose tissue. Within the lobes, there are smaller lobes called lobules, which are made up of epithelial tissue. Small structures called alveoli make up the lobules. This is where breast milk is produced. It is then transported to the nipple through the ducts. When estrogen and or progesterone levels increase, the binding rate to the estrogen receptors increase as well. With the increased binding of these hormones to the protein receptor, the cancer cells are produced through cell mutation. The cancer growth is further encouraged through the binding of the HER2 new receptor to epithelial growth factor. Testosterone and androstenedone uh, are both converted into estrogen. During epithelial cell growth, the cells that are mutated begin to replicate through the unregulated cell growth. This means that the mutated cells begin dividing into daughter cells that are also mutated, which leads to metastasis, the spread of cancer to places in the body that it did not originate from. There are two major forms of breast cancer, one of them being non-invasive. Non-invasive breast cancer is when the tumor has no not extended beyond the mammary duct, lobule, or point of origin into the surrounding breast tissue. The other major form is invasive. Invasive breast cancer is when the cancer is extended to the surrounding breast tissue with the potential to metastasize. Some medications that can be taken to prevent cancer growth include tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors, and trastuzumab. Tamoxifen prevents cancer growth by binding to the estrogen receptors to block estrogen. Aromatase inhibitors are used to prevent the conversion of testosterone and androstenedione to estrogen, reducing the amount of estrogen circulating in the blood. Another medication is trastuzumab, which is an antibody that binds to the HER2 receptor, therefore blocking the epithelial growth factor from binding to the receptor and preventing further cell division. So now what can I do? Well, Hillary, you have a few options, including chemotherapy, radiation, medication, as well as a lumpectomy or a mastectomy. 